concentrate. You got me looking so crazy. I want you back. I had no idea what this was going to become. I don't see how this can work. You're just going to stand there gawking? Yes. You got me looking so crazy. What do you want, Anastasia? This time, no rules, no punishments, and no more secrets. Looking so crazy in love. Got me looking, got me looking so crazy in love. <laughs> I think you're the first woman who's tried to save him. Oh, 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 no, no. Welcome to They Called Us a Movie, testing the strength of friendships one terrible movie at a time. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and other podcast services by searching They Called Us a Movie and find us on Twitter and Instagram at TicTampod. That's T C D A M Pod. We are also now a proud member of Geek Vibes Nation, and you could find them at GVNation.com. Welcome back to They Called Us a Movie. This is Anthony Delvecchio. With me, as always, is Dan Aquino and Mark Myers. Say hello, gentlemen. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Hello, everyone out there. Um, I. Coming into this week, um, we'll talk about it later in the episode, but I just want to start out with one thing for you guys. I don't, I've never been more baffled um, by a movie that I didn't know what to expect or why it was baffling me while watching this entire movie. I don't know if you kind of know what I mean. Like, I kept looking at the time going, like, something's got to happen in this movie, right? <laughs> uh, like, it's a movie where the plot never starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like... I was expecting it to be bad, but I was just confused the whole time. Mm, sure. <laughs> like, but it was like, it's the first time I ever happened in that movie where it's not like, oh, I can kind of see the act structure because we've been watching movies long enough, um, the three of us. And I'm like, I, what is, where's like, to, you know, to use the technical terms, like, okay, where's the rising action coming mm-hmm. in here? Like, nothing happens. It's funny. We'll get deeper into it later. But yeah, um, yeah that was. I was first thing I was thinking I was wondering if you guys had the same feeling watching it. Yep. I mean, nothing really happened. But before we get into that movie and what we watched this week, we're going to do a little something a little different. If you follow us on Twitter, you'll know that at the end of every month, we the movie that we pick to watch, we actually voted on by our Twitter followers. And we never really talk about it on here, but we decided that it makes a lot more sense to kind of, you know, let you guys know what is coming up. So if you're listening to this now, we're going to talk about the movies that we're going to pick for our February movie of the month, which the poll will go up. If this is Thursday, if you're listening to it Thursday, it'll go up. The poll will go up next week. And then after that, we will have an episode. Um, So February movie of the month, we had a hard time picking the theme of the month. Um, Obviously, Valentine's Day is here, but we're already doing that. Gerard Uary, we already figured that out. We already talked about the ugly truth. So we were trying to figure out what to do. Uh, we wound up talking, doing presidents, uh, specifically movies that have presidents in them. Uh, that's really the only, yeah. as as far as the theme really went. So we all picked three movies. Uh, we should just briefly talk about it. Uh, Mark, why don't you introduce yeah. your movie first? Yeah, so um, I chose a movie that falls right into that um, curve where uh, the low sixes to high fives on uh, IMDb 
and also was one of the uh, fabled six VHSs that were mine to own when I was growing up, um, which is uh, the Harrison Ford thriller Air Force One, um, the one that has uh, given us many memes from it, um, but also a movie that I'm on the fence of whether it's too good for our podcast, but there's definitely going to be stuff to talk about um, in it. So I am excited. It was, I think, when we first discussed this off air, the first movie that came to mind for me. Cool. Um, so I uh, decided to go ahead with it instead of second guess myself. Great. Yeah. Okay. Dan, what about you? What movie are you picking? Uh, I decided to go with a 90s classic, uh, First Kid with Sinbad. And that, that's really <laughs> the only reason I picked it. I just figured, you know, that'll be fun. I don't have, I've never seen it. Uh, it's probably going to lose because Air Force One is a juggernaut. um but you know what you know if if it wins it wins and we'll we'll see where it goes but yeah that that's the movie i went with i don't even know if the it takes place in the white house i know that but i don't know how much of the president is in it if there is a i'm sure there is obviously but i don't know who's who would be the president in that movie spoilers it's sinbad no (laughs) (laughs) i think he's like a secret service agent i'm assuming yeah yeah i I, yeah yeah, i've heard of it yeah Okay. I'm That's pretty sure I'm, I've seen. I'm pretty sure I watched it at least once on VHS, like rental. Um, yeah. So my pick is another movie that I'm pretty sure is just going to get the shit kicked out of it by Air Force <laughs> One. Uh, it's a Welcome to Mooseport because once Mark picked Air Force One, I was like, "Well, that's going to win." Because, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you know, Gene Hackman's last movie that he ever did. He retired shortly after this, and he plays the president. Uh, that is also retired. So if you want to watch, make us watch that movie, then vote for Welcome to Mooseport. If you just want to watch, make us watch a Gary Oldman with a Russian accent, what, vote for the one that we all think is going to win. <laughs> I, I so, think it became like we're, we're just picking the runners up now. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, which is fine because this was also, a, this was a tough pick this, yeah. this week, so. Um, happy to watch Air Force. So if you're listening to this on the week or day we drop this, we will be posting that poll somewhere either the 14th or the 15th of February. So check it out and vote for your favorite movie that you want to make us watch. Um, so uh, that with that out of the way, gentlemen, what do you watch this week? Dan, let's start with you. I, I watched a couple movies. Uh, I watched first thing I watched was Cop Shop with uh frank grillo and uh gerard butler (laughs) i knew i knew that movie had him in it (laughs) yeah just hey just because you guys are done with draguary doesn't mean that i'm done with draguary all right yeah there there are a couple of choices you could have made if you weren't banned from it for the president's list for (laughs) draguary several (laughs) well i i've decided that i'm gonna try to watch at least one gerard butler movie during february (laughs) gonna keep that i'm sorry i'm sorry what month dan gerard okay (laughs) gonna keep it alive uh and then i watched an actual movie uh cop shop's an actual movie it was okay it's it's uh you know just your typical action movie but um you know solid solid movie but then i watched nightmare alley the other day oh. with uh, Bradley Cooper, uh, Willem Dafoe. It, it has a very good cast in it. Uh, with Tony Collette is in it, I believe. Yep. Um, yeah. Is it now? Is it Rooney Mara? Is that who that is? That's Rooney Mara. Yep. Rooney Mara. Okay. I, I liked it. I thought it was very weird, very twisted in, in certain aspects. Uh, I, I dug the the circus freak show of the 40s and like you know 30s and 40s. It's an interesting movie. Uh, I, I I highly recommend it. I I saw it was nominated for best picture. So yeah, yeah, pretty good. Uh, quick question. Sure. Did you watch the original? Uh, no, I did not. Okay, that seems to be where the opinion on this movie is splitting from people I know. Is ones that saw the original movie, um, from like what the forties or fifties, Aunt? I think I don't even know. Uh, Maybe it's, yeah. I, it might be thirties or forties. Forties, yeah. And you know, everybody that has only seen this movie loves it, and the other one is just doing that, you know, comparison thing, and it's not they don't make them like they used to. Sort of mm-hmm. reply to it. Um, so it's interesting to um, see that you kept that, you know um sort of i was gonna say tradition but it's not a tradition but you know what i mean 
um, between people I know that have and have not watched both versions. This uh, the the other version, the original, came out in 1947. Yeah, almost two hours long. That's pretty long for a movie in the 40s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my favorite things about movies back then is that it's rated past. I like, saw that. P-A- yeah, P A S S E D. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, Mark, what about you? Anything? Yeah. So um, after you guys talked about it last week, I finally got a chance to watch at least two episodes of um uh the vox machina legend of vox machina um i'll say two things about it first you're absolutely right their voice actors the voice acting is pretty amazing um in it uh you know very easily they are professionally paid actors so they fall right back into these characters pretty quickly and i do also agree that there's way too much vomiting um in, in the episode um i maybe i'm just not a vomit humor kind of guy maybe um that's why it it felt like too much to me um but it just felt like that um they needed something uh to kind of separate it from uh the actual games that were put on there um and that that might have been a downside to me as someone that probably has watched the campaign one and the other stuff a lot more than uh, maybe the two of you have is just trying to pinpoint the when this takes place and the certain things that are different from the story um, because they had to put certain characters in that wouldn't have been around at this time and stuff like that. Um, so it's one of those like reading the book and watching the movie sort of thing mm-hmm. um, with it. But I will say that at the end of the second episode, um, they introduce um, uh, the, uh, well, might as well say it's not much of a spoiler because it was throughout campaign one, but they introduced the Briarwoods um, and just the introduction to them and the way they're portrayed is exactly how I imagined it and pretty well done. Um, they got every uh, all the aesthetic about them and, and their the carriage driver and all that down perfectly from what, you know, Matt described as the M. Uh, but yeah, it's funny at parts. Um, there's certain things that, you know, maybe haven't aged well um, with some of the characters um, over the years uh, that they had to put in here so that the, you know, the critters didn't get upset um about it but uh yeah i mean it's pretty solid uh i'll i'll probably watch the whole season but i think the one thing that'll be i finally um had that feeling of someone that has like like i said the book to movie thing i haven't had that much or maybe even at all and now i know why people are kind of snooty like that (laughs) while watching this um sure but yeah i I recommend it if you guys uh, the one thing i will say um for anyone who plays the indie out there watching um, the battles in this are the best one-to-one that I've seen in any kind of cartoon adaptation of something um, to how a battle would look compared to a, a D&D game um, sure. because everything takes place, you know, within six seconds. So the fact that one person does this while the other one's running to do something else, you know, and just the combo, um, you know, together with it is is probably as good as you'll be able to uh, make that weird um like idea of combat in D D that you don't really think about because it takes so long when you're playing um but how it actually would play out time wise um but yeah yeah i'll give it that the animation and the fight scenes are great um but yeah i'm, I'm looking forward to see uh what else they do going forward and hoping there is less vomiting okay i'm pretty sure in the next three episodes there wasn't any vomiting after okay, good. yeah <laughs> they released six episodes i'm pretty sure there wasn't any after that but i could be wrong as for me, I watched a few things. I watched Nightmare Alley, which was very solid. There's only one thing that gets into spoilers that kind of irked me about the ending, but um, it was solid. It was really good. The cinematography was really good. The acting was really good. Uh, interesting, weird story. Also watched A Quiet Place 2, which was fine. I didn't need a sequel to the first one, but this wasn't terrible. That's really all I got to say about that. <laughs> yeah, it, it will get. Uh, you better prepare yourself for another one then. All right. Is there a third one? Yeah. And I think uh, who's directing it? I think Emily Blunt's directing this one. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And then taking uh, taking the baton from Dan last week was watching a whole bunch of Clinton Eastwood movies. Made me want to watch Clint Eastwood movies. So I watched the outlaw Josie Wells. Oh, where did you see that? that? The HBO Max. Damn it. I got to watch that. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Uh, I that's not one that I've I've gone I've seen it once, and it's not one that I really frequent. But it's it's pretty good. It's a it's definitely one of his best American made um, westerns. 
uh, obviously the the Man with No Name trilogy is still still his best, except mm-hmm. for maybe Unforgiven, arguably. And then we watched last night the new Netflix documentary, The Tinder Swindler. I don't know if you guys have heard anything about that. <laughs> what? It's called The Tinder Swindler. Oh, so that's, that's a mouthful. Awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> that sounds like a Disney movie. Yeah. So a brief rundown of what this is. It's a it's a documentary. It's a true story of this guy who would meet women on Tinder. He'd romance them. He'd take them out. And he's like this Christian Grey sort of person. You know, he's got fancy five star hotels. He's got private jets, all that jazz. Whining them, dining them, 69ing them uh, every which way but loose. Can you confirm that last part? uh, He's good at what he does. I'm just going to say that. Credit where credit's due. Credit where credit's due. (laughs) The the guy had a game plan and he saw it out, man. This sounds like uh, Bill Bill Paxton's character from um, True Lies. Sure. Where he pretends to be the secret agent. It's like, oh, I have to. We have to leave the country. Give me your passport. Yeah, uh, it's it's not dissimilar to that, but it's 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 a really fascinating story. You really feel bad for the women that because there are multiples. He's done this plenty of times, um, but it's it is brutal. <laughs> and there's really not like not to spoil it. It's not there's not a super happy ending. Um, the com- comeuppance that he deserves, spoiler alert, he doesn't necessarily get those comeuppance. Wow. <laughs> he gets away scot-free. <laughs> uh, not quite, but not what he deserves, I'll say that. I mean, he should probably be in jail for the rest of his life. Yeah, because that's the like... amount that he's done. Like they said, tens of millions of dollars he oh, scammed out of people. Wow. Jeez, and just Louise. like it was like twenty thousand dollars at a time, too. Damn, it's fascinating. Dude. Yeah, I gotta check this out. This this does seem fascinating. Yeah, it's on Netflix. I, I suggest it too. And it's and it's not a series; it's a movie. You know how Netflix sometimes is like, "Hey, we have this really good story. Let's turn it into four episodes." Yeah, for no reason. Yeah, it makes no sense. <laughs> Just yeah, give us one episode. Yeah, hour and forty five minutes. That's all it is. Not it's bad. Exactly the amount that this story deserves. That's all I watched. I think I also watched Legend of Vox Machina. I watched episodes four, five, and six. It's it's still good. Um, it's nice and light for me. Like I just kind of put it on the background and watch it. But yeah, that was my week. So we're gonna take a quick break, and you guys are gonna listen to some ads, and we will be back in a second. And welcome back. Now it's time to get into this week's movie, and this week is Valentine's week. So as we've been doing for the past few years, we've been alternating between Twilight movies and Fifty Shades of Grey movies. So last week, last year, we had Twilight New Moon. And I think we didn't know how good we had it because this <laughs> year we had to watch Fifty Shades Darker, the first sequel in the Fifty Shades series. Gentlemen, where are you coming from with Fifty Shades Darker? Damn, nothing. Yeah, uh, right before. Well, yeah, yep. okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. I'm sure you had a school. So, <laughs> all right, Mark. What about you? You like well, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. like it didn't. Yep. At least have him go. They have to go to the hospital, right? Yeah. He just walks <laughs> walks in. He's not the hospital. He's probably concussed. Yeah. But like, no, we won't even get that scene of like everybody around the bed. It's like, oh my god, thank God you're all right. It's like, yeah, yeah. You gotta take more than that to stop me. Real quick, real quick. yeah. I don't. <laughs> it walks yeah. home apparently. Or mm-hmm. you know, yeah. It's um, yeah. um mm-hmm. I, right. Sure. As for me. I think I've gone on record from the last time is like we saw Fifty Shades of Grey, my wife and I, in theaters, and we were completely out of place because neither of us has read any of the books. And we were just like, oh, let's just see what this is, what it's going to be. And we were bored to tears. I think we rolled our eyes more at that movie than any other movie we've ever seen. And this movie is worse. And the, I, I, I mentioned it earlier. I can't wait for next year when we get to do a twilight movie because these are these are bad man these are barely movies it's fascinating just i don't know where i don't know what her motivation is for anything because wasn't the whole drama last year last movie the the idea that she didn't want to be a part of his red room and then all of a sudden through no reason no decisions made by any characters all of a sudden now she's into it um i thought we were going to get another vibrating panty scene for the second time and in, in as many oh, movies yeah 
And that scene from the Ugly Truth was ten times more better. It was better than that than this movie. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, right. This doesn't have a payoff. Like like Mark said, there. This is a movie without a single payoff. Every moment of drama is solved because Christian just happens to be there, and he's also rich. It's like, oh, this your your new boss is about to try and rape you, and you ran away. Guess who's downstairs, and guess who knows the CEO. So that that little thread is done for now. Next movie, maybe we'll bring it back up or just shit. And this is this is the one thing that I kept thinking throughout this whole movie uh, regarding the sex scenes. Why does he fuck with his pants on every time? (laughs) There are six sex scenes in this movie. Five of them. He's got his pants on and he just kind of unzips the fly. I have no idea why this dude, they fuck in the shower and he's got his pants on. (laughs) It's like, I like, it was so, it was almost as distracting at the, uh, as the Chronicles or Riddick poster at the end of the movie. I saw that. that, (laughs) That's the only it's center frame. (laughs) It's center frame breaking up the, the shot between the two actors it's sitting right there in both of their eye lines it's incredible uh, <laughs> are you a vin diesel fan <laughs> and, yeah uh so he totally sex trafficked leela right heavy right sex basically <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. perfect and every dude in this movie is just a piece of shit not a like piece of shit him. <laughs> like besides him like yeah. obvi- uh, he's king piece of shit in this yeah. movie but yeah. the the photographer buddy not letting her know that he's yeah. using her likeness that's that's not cool yeah. um obviously the rapist boss sure. yeah. 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 yeah harden yeah. yeah how doesn't she know that her best friend was fucking her stepson yeah i i guess they're still fr- they're still old friends they're still friends oh yeah i think she yeah. was a little on the sauce at the in this movie you don't know him <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yep some- Oh, oh yeah. More. I've got the numbers for that. Yeah. 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 Keeping with the whole theme of the movie, this is a movie with all foreplay and no and no payoff. Yeah. It's it's all it, everything is the first act, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that that's how the movie ends. You don't know if he's alive or dead. But uh yeah, for, he has to eat Roz. <laughs> I need to survive. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yep. He's like, ah, uh, she didn't make it. Yeah. Because then he'd have a chance. Yes. So, Fifty Shades Darker from 2017. This is only five years ago. Directed, <laughs> directed by James Foley, who directed several Madonna videos, including Dress You Up and Papa Don't Preach. Went on to direct At Close Range, Who's That Girl, Another Madonna Vehicle, Fear, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, Confidence, Perfect Stranger, 12 episodes of House of Cards, and the third movie in the series, Fifty Shades Freed. Stars Dakota Johnson, Jamie Dornan, Eric Johnson, Eloise Mumford, Bella Heathcote, Rita Ora, Luke Grimes, who isn't a country music star, Victor Rasek, Max Martini, Kim Basinger, and Marsha Gay Harden. Has an IMDb score of 4.6 and a Rotten Tomato score of 11%. Budget $55 million. Box office. $114 million US, $381 million worldwide. It's again, certified to it. Yep. <laughs> Jilling themselves off in the front row. <laughs> like, treat you like shit? <laughs> or, did we watch the same goddamn movie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want me to fuck you on a pool table? We got rid of it when we had kids. <laughs> but what? what's the expectation? That's... Is it just the money thing? Is it just I I, like but yeah. maybe it's just like from a man's perspective, it doesn't make any sense because it's not appealing to us sexually. But like, but what's sexy about it? Like that's the whole thing. If this this movie isn't sexy, it's got a lot of no. sex in it, but it's not sexy. How mm-hmm. can, yeah. Um, well that's what I that I have that in my notes. For a guy that's supposed to be so kinky. He defaults to missionary with his pants on very often. Yeah. Like, I I just, yeah, I just don't see, like, I, I feel like if I could connect with it on the appeal level, I would get why this is such a massive hit. Yeah. But I'm just not, it's not connecting with me. And maybe it, maybe I'm not supposed to, because I'm not the demographic. But For instance. Or, right. 
Yeah, she's they both just seem very bored. I think yeah. maybe that's the problem. Yeah, the kings like, of I know. Yeah, it's, you don't have to tell me twice. It's yeah. just, but like there are like some movies that are just like universally like, oh yeah, that's a sexy scene. I can't think of any off the top of my head now. Like nine and a half weeks, I suppose. I don't know. Kim Basinger's in that, but this is just like. Man, two people that really don't seem interested in fucking with, fucking each other. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I- yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> complete. They both personify their locations. The other two, totally <laughs> beach people, totally vacation people. Christian and Anastasia are both just Seattle people, yeah. like constantly in rain slickers and umbrellas. <laughs> Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if this was Beauty and the Beast, they all got turned into pieces of furniture. Like yeah. she'd be she'd be a coat hanger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and I she... like Dakota Johnson. Like yeah. she you know, she took down Ellen. She did yeah. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I've seen her in other things where she's not bad. And it's and she's carrying this movie because he won't even show his ass. Was that I think it might be his ass? I think it's yeah. body double. There was p- parts that I was like, man, he must be a never nude because like there are shots of like his chest where you don't see his face. That always says to me, that's a body double. An insert yeah. shot. That ain't him. Um, yeah. That ass is definitely not his. Because if that was ass was his, he'd be walking around pantsless all movie. That it's, was that was God tier ass. It was another line. I, <laughs> right. You know. Right. Sure. Oh no. He's probably got like flat, just a flat white guy ass, really. Yeah. His, <laughs> like Hank Hill style, <laughs> like a frog butt. He's from Northern. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got no cake. You should have gotten Jean Claude Van Damme for this role. Yeah. I. One thing is, I hate how nonchalant everybody is about how rich and how young Christian Grey is. Yeah. Because it's so, it's not realistic. He's twenty seven billion, is twenty seven year old billionaire, and it. And the news report says he's one of the youngest billionaires in Seattle. <laughs> like, like, so he's not even the number one. You can't even make that definitive statement. Yeah, the, there's, there's the youngest year old. billionaire in Seattle. Yeah, they're, they're... <laughs> you guys want to get into the plot? Yeah, All sure. Right. Dan, what do you got? Okay, great. And we are going to take a quick break and you guys are going to listen to some messages from friends of the podcast and we will be right back. Hey, this is Ken M. Padawan Jay. Coach Duffy. From the Ocho Duro Parlay Hour podcast. Every week, the ODPH is talking sports, movies, TV, comics, and more. It's always a parlay of topics on each episode. You can find the ODPH on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, and wherever you find great podcasts such as the one you're listening to right now. Don't forget to check out OchoDuroParleyHour.com, where you can find the links to all of the ODPH social media accounts, links to the bands whose music you hear each week on the show, hashtag 607 podcast info, and parlay points, our companion block section of the show. Thanks for listening to the ODPH. Now get back to your regularly scheduled podcast. Welcome, travelers. Seems like you're looking for a story. Well, I got one for you. It involves adventure, friendship, and all hey, sorts hey, of... Uh, Earl, why don't you tell him about that time I stole that big-ass melon? Yeah, yeah, I, I was going for more Or you could tell him about the time I kicked your ass, Earl. I wouldn't ever tell him Do I need to get time. my ref gear on? Okay, everyone, shut up. Now come with me as I tell you a story from afar. Hey, everybody, my name's David. I'm the DM for From Afar Podcast. A from Afar Podcast is all about four friends separated by distance, brought together by adventure. Hope you all stop by and give us a listen. Thanks. And welcome back. Now it's time to get into plot four, Fifty Shades Darker. We open on Christian Grey having night terrors of his abusive father and then credits. And then we cut to Anastasia Steele opening her apartment door to a delivery of white roses with a note from Christian Grey wishing her good luck on her new job. After considering to throw them out immediately, she thinks better of it. She goes to her job and she's working as an assistant to some other handsome dude. And he's getting her... She's getting her tea in the morning for some reason, not the other way around. And she mopes around Seattle while her party-loving friend is down in a tropical location with her boyfriend. Her mom calls her and tries to find out what happened between her and Christian, but she tells her something vague and just blows it off. And then at work, Anna gets ready to leave and she talks over some manuscripts that she read through. because she's working as some sort of book publisher, but her boss pays special attention to her walking away. That's foreshadowing. 
Anna goes to an art gallery opening for her friend Jose, the photographer, and it turns out that a massive amount of them of his work are portraits of Anna, unbeknownst to her. Jose, it's, yeah, it's just called this red flags. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't don't you think yeah. he would have to go get her permission for this? Right, and he's selling images of her, is he not? Yeah, I mean, he's probably like, you ain't gonna sue, bitch. I'm gonna do what I want. Well, then, because I'm a man. <laughs> That's, yeah. Well, then Christian Grey comes into the picture, right? He That's when you yeah. start to get a little nervous because he, he can do some shit as he, you know, mm-hmm. he winds up doing later in the movie. <laughs> Jose explains that if he had told her, she wouldn't have said yes and that she's too shy. And someone up and buys all the portraits of Anna. And guess who? It's Christian who shows up. <laughs> you know, I may be imagining it, but he looks worse in this movie. I don't know. This <laughs> The years between these two first two movies, I feel like not super kind to Jamie Torrance. He's still objectively a good looking guy, but, you know, yeah. He tells her that he doesn't want strangers gawking at her and he wants to take her out to dinner. She agrees, but says it's just dinner so they could talk. They leave the gallery and at the first alley they get to, Christian backs Anna against the wall and starts aggressively kissing her, but she pushes him away. Then they go to dinner. Christian tries to order for her, but she tells the waiter what she actually wants. And when the waiter leaves, Christian tells her he wants to get back together and to renegotiate the terms of their contract. Oh, Anna, the says, fucking... you know, Anna says no, because shit got dark with him the last time. And he says he's working on it. But he's vague about that. And I don't really think he's working on it. And she says that they can't work if he's going to be mysterious. Like, real quick, ladies. Yep. When we say we're working on it, that means we're not working on it. Yeah, we're literally just biding ourselves time, so we just get our claws in. Yeah, and that you're just—it's just too late at that we're, point. We're gonna pretend to work at it for a good, yeah. a good two weeks, <laughs> and then once, like, because that's like once we know that you're like, okay, yeah, he has worked on it, then it all comes crumbling down, and just not all at once, but then we start bringing it back a little by little, you know, like almost making you—it's like gaslighting, right? Making you second guess uh, yourself. No, I mean, se- uh, gaslighting is a little more specific, but this is kind of like, I think the analogy is like when you're when you throw a frog into a pot of boiling water. Yeah, if if you throw it in and it's already boiling, it's going to jump right out. Right. But if you put the pot the the frog in there before it boils, and then you slowly raise the heat. Oh, it doesn't. You'll cook it. Yeah, it doesn't realize. Yeah. Yeah. That's the sort of thing, because as we as we found out from last week's movie, The Ugly Truth, men can't change and they won't. They can't. They're incapable of changing. Incapable. That is right. See, Gerard Butler, he he should have been in Fifty Shades of Grey. (laughs) (laughs) I guess. Yeah. But with a cool accent. Mm -hmm. I think that makes up. for. Yep. So he tells her that his birth mother was a crack addict. So then they agree to new terms, basically a relationship without rules and everything on Anna's terms. So he takes her home and gives her a gift that's no strings attached. And then they make out outside her apartment and leave it at that. She opens the gift and it's a MacBook and an iPhone, even though he has a Android, which is weird. So <laughs> can buy two. <laughs> <laughs> so she uses the phone to text Christian embarrassingly, ending the text later, baby. I'm going to say that one again. So she uses the phone to text Christian <laughs> embarrassing. So she uses the phone to text Christian embarrassingly ending the text later, baby. And there's some mysterious woman staring up at Anna's window from the street at work. Anna has a conversation with the HR woman, Liz, and winds up in a weird conversation with Liz and her boss, Jack, about going for drinks at a local bar. Jack invites Liz, who tells him she can't. And then he invites Anna and tells her to bring her plans with her when she says she has prior engagements. Anna leaves work, and that mysterious woman calls out to her by name, but Anna doesn't know her. But then Jack comes out and ushers Anna in the other direction to the bar, and the girl disappears. At the bar, Jack tells Anna that he was impressed with her notes on the manuscript she recommended. And Christian walks in and immediately goes back to his old ways, acting all jealous boyfriend on the boss, and ushering Anna out of the bar immediately, even before she gets to drink one sip of that beer. She tells him that he needs to relax, especially when it comes to her boss. And then she takes him grocery shopping, which may be the first time Christian has ever set foot in a safe way. She buys him a generic vanilla ice cream for his troubles. At her apartment, they prepare dinner together, and she says she wants to take it slow. And then he asks about her new job, but not about how she likes it, but more about how the company is managed. And she realizes he's planning to buy the company. And she gets mad at him or for interfering with her life by becoming her boss's boss's boss. 
and she gets turned on by it for some reason, and she totally reneges on what she just says about taking it slow, and then they fuck. I, I, yeah, he has never picked up a knife before in his life. I, I just realized Dorian, uh, Dorian Gray, Christian Gray is a boring Batman. He's a he's a boring Bruce Wayne because <laughs> sure in, in in some of the Batman movies, Bruce buys random things right for no reason. Yeah. So, for instance, in Batman Begins, he goes swimming with these two supermodels in a in the the hotel pool when there is no pool, and the guy the, the waiter says, "Hey, you know, they're not allowed to swim there. That there's rules against it." And he says, "Well, I'm buying this hotel. I'm going to change the rules." He's just like, "I I just want to buy this because you work there, and I'm very possessive." Like, yep. Like that's you're, that's not how you be a billionaire. Be be cooler. God damn it. <laughs> but after sex, she says the words kinky fuckery in earnest. And as they sleep, it looks like their mysterious girl may or may not be in the apartment. In the morning, Anna tries to return a check for 24 grand that Christian gave to her. He refuses, so she rips it up. So then he calls his assistant and he has, to tr- he has her transfer $24,000 to Anna's, Anna's bank account. Which means that, he has her banking information. Yeah, I was going to say that number. <laughs> yeah. that, I but know. I shouldn't have yeah. so. Yep. So they go to breakfast and he invites Anna to a ball that his parents are throwing. And then she sees the mysterious girl across the street. He gets weird and so they shall leave. He brings her to a hair salon where he starts pushing his weight around to get her appointment. And he says hello to Kim Basinger and kisses her on the cheek, which causes Anna to get mad. She confronts him about the fact that this is the woman that abused him as a teenager. And he admits that he has taken several subs to the salon for her approval. And she asks if the girl following her is one of his old subs. And he says that they'll talk about it back at the apartment. So they go back to the apartment and he shows her a folder of the girl that's been following her. She was a sub for for Christian for two years ago and she wanted more. So she left, found a husband and then became a widow and then tried to kill herself in front of the housekeeper. An eventful two years, to say the least. And he's then she asked. He's kind of like he he shrugged it off pretty well. Yeah, I I was questioning whether or not that whole story is true. Just by the fact the timing of it, like. Two years, all of that happened. So why wouldn't he just say mm-hmm. that? Like, yeah, it's kind of bullshit. No, I'm saying that this is the story he's making. Oh, gotcha. Out. Okay, yeah. So that gotcha. Yeah, I feel like uh, she was his sub not that long ago, but maybe that's just me reading things. Then she asks to see the file that he has on her, and Christian unwillingly lets her see it. And it's cr- as creepy as you think because it's a file of all her personal details. After all, so having a file of all the personal details of people you're dating is not cool let's just yeah, go this, yeah. This, yeah. yeah yeah and she tells him it's creep okay oh, i was gonna say at, at what point does it become gold digging for I, for anna I, you know like because you put up I, with a lot and you're like well he's a billionaire so my life should be a little easier you know what i mean like if you if he was charming like you'd give her a little more leash right i i would say so <laughs> yeah like if there he showed some semblance of humanity yeah but but he's He's not charming at all. He's not. He's, he's just rich. He's, it, it, gray's the perfect name for him because he's just gray. His emotions, his the, his way of doing business is just very gray. He's like, yeah, it's just there. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then she tells him it's creepy, and she says that he is not trying to have a relationship with her. He's trying to own her, and tells him that she's annoyed that she can't touch him. So then he makes her connect the dots with the, his chest scars with lipstick, and then tells her those are his boundaries. And they have sex. After sex, a hot hairstylist comes to the apartment to get her hair and makeup done up. Then as she gets dressed, he puts a pair of silver balls up her vagina. Not in her butt. <laughs> Not in her oh, butt. Man, the the, the earnesty in, in which she said that. I'm mean, <laughs> not putting those in my butt. I, oh. I did laugh a little bit because I was expecting her to say ass and butt is just a funny word. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like This she, is a rated R movie, obviously. Say ass. Yeah. <laughs> the director's like, you have to. It says it in the book. It goes in your butt. <laughs> and then they're off to the ball at Christian's parents' house, which happens to be a masked ball. When they see his mom and they sit down in time for the auction. The first lot of the auction is a weekend at Christian's Aspen house. So Anna bids the $24,000 that Christian gave to her that she didn't want in the first place. And she winds up winning. Christian says that he wants to spank her. So they go to his childhood bedroom and he ties her hands and spanks her. And then they fuck. If for a guy- second day home... <laughs> And for a guy that's supposed to be so kinky and into weird shit, he certainly defaults to nearly fully clothed missionary an awful lot. Is this when they have the sh- they start in the shower? No. no. Okay. The shower is towards the end. Because there's a scene. It made me laugh so fucking hard, and I don't know why. 
but you you went over the scene where uh, Christian has Anna draw a line around his body in lipstick. Mm-hmm. There's a scene where they're they're getting ready to to do it, and the lipstick is still on him, and mm-hmm. it made me laugh so hard because I thought, why wouldn't that have been? Why wouldn't they have gotten rid of it by now? It's been however <laughs> long. Why is it still there? This is something. Yeah. This is something that should have been done, and it it made me laugh. I don't know why, but. It, I just saw it and like this is so fucking stupid. It's weird. It's weird because they get dressed for the ball. <laughs> right. Like you would think that that would have been part of his his preparation. It's like, oh well, I should really get this lipstick off. Of That's what I'm saying, right? Like the the the, <laughs> the point of the scene is done. We don't need the lipstick there anymore. Yeah. So they go back to the ball, and Anna goes to the bathroom, and Elena, Kim Basinger, joins her in the bathroom to tell her that she isn't right for Christian. He needs a woman that he can own. So Anna storms off and tells Christian she wants to go home. Christian takes her back to his apartment and security detail sees that Anna's car has been vandalized in Christian's private garage and then takes her to his boat and they shower together and she washes off the lipstick. Yeah. It could have been mm, interesting, right? Like, Why not yeah. just to show, oh, you need my protection? Yep. That bitch crazy. Well, yeah. I mean, that girl did does prove the point. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it... <laughs> true. Um, uh, I have a note. Is Jamie Dornan and Jennifer nude? Because whenever he has a shirt off, he's usually obstructed by Dakota Johnson, and any shots of his chest seem to be insert shots, which leads me to believe that these are body doubles. In the morning, Anna asks about Christian's birth mom. He says that she overdosed and that he was there when it happened. And then we montage Christian teaching Anna how to drive a boat as Zane and T Swift's I Don't Want to Live Forever plays. The next day at work, and his boss. Like I had- <laughs> yep. The next day at work, Anna's boss asks her if she booked their rooms in New York for the book convention, and she didn't realize that she was expected to go with him. And her boy's boss gives her shit for dating a billionaire, but not because billionaires shouldn't exist, but because now he thinks Anna is a gold digger. It's more so Anna that text- he can't bang her. Yeah. yeah. Anna texts Christian to tell him she has to go to New York, and they have an argument over text until he says they'll discuss it later. She goes to his apartment, and Christian is busy with work, so she wanders into his sex dungeon to have a look around. He comes in and she starts asking about all the things in the room, nipple clamps, some leg things. But Christian says that the last time she saw this side of him, she didn't like it. And she says this time is different. I'm not sure what is different this time, but I guess it is because she said so. Yeah, that's the only thing that's different. (laughs) (laughs) So he takes her into the bedroom, straps those leg restraints on her, and then they fuck. And again, he doesn't take his pants off. (laughs) It's it's like uh, sometimes in uh, adult videos, they keep they keep their shoes on yeah. <laughs> why just take everything off be, be yeah. normal it's Man, just it's, yes, like but it's just it's very distracting like if it happened once it's like okay well he yeah fine but several times he just just takes his dick out of his pants and fucks yeah. but like it's everything like it's still you're like he's still buckled <laughs> it's like <laughs> like you didn't even bother to undo his belt you're gonna ruin those pants too <laughs> Right. Oh, yeah. Dry clean only, man. Yeah. People are going to start asking questions. <laughs> it's calculus, man. At work the next day, Anna tries to tell her boss that she made plans that she can't change, so she's going to have to decline the trip to New York. He tells her that he thinks she has potential, but he doesn't want to waste his time with someone that doesn't take her job seriously. And then he tries to rape her, saying that if she's going to fuck her way to prominence, shouldn't she want to fuck someone that can make her smarter and not just richer? That's not how fucking works, by the way. She goes to work the next day, and the unofficial word is that Jack resigned abruptly. So they ask Anastasia to fill in for Jack at the editor's meeting. She does, and she has the brilliant idea of taking on a writer that already has a large online following, which is so novel of her. (laughs) Really thinking outside the box there. (laughs) Yeah. And they decide to give her Jack's job on a temporary basis. Yeah. Wait, does, she goes, does no one see see the connection there? Right. No one gets that. She does. She was. <laughs> I a se- so. I, listen, I don't. I'm not trying to speak down on secretaries at all. But she was a secretary. Now she is the. She's running the company. Yeah. It's kind of a kind of fishy, I would say. Oh, well, she's she's running a department. The she's the fiction editor now. Okay. That's still a pretty big jump. That, that's, a, that's an incredible job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she goes to dinner with Christian and she asks if he had anything to do with it. And he says, no. So, Mark, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If we learn anything from one and a half movies so far through this plot is that he can be trusted. Yeah. 
And then she then he asks her if she came to a decision regarding moving in, and she says yes in the most non-committal will non-committal way possible. So Christian then tells her to take off her panties, and she does. Then after dinner, they get into an elevator with a bunch of other people, and he fingers her loudly in the elevator, but somehow no one seems to notice. How do not these people not see? I wonder if it's one of those things where they, they do, but they kind of have to keep it on the down low. It's like, oh, it's, it's Christian Grey. Like, oh, we can't really draw attention to yeah, it. That rest- <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just take the finger elevator to the second floor and... Uh... <laughs> Like, that's be crude, but there's going to be bodily noises that they didn't put into the sound, into the uh, the sound design that they're probably going to hear. Right. Yeah, that's uh, just also unsanitary. Yeah. You know, there's a few things wrong with that situation, but, you know, I, I'm just, call me old fashioned, but. And they're like, they're right up against each other, too, everybody. Like, that's a tight, tight elevator. <laughs> well, I don't know. I have nothing for that. It's. <laughs> I, I, again, I think it's one of those, as Mark alluded to earlier, the uh, the fanfic. Mm-hmm. So the author was like, "Yeah, this could this could totally work." I don't know if it's digging into their mind, you know what Maybe. I mean? But that's a that's a interesting idea you had there. Yeah, low passive perception is what is what we're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> they make it back to the apartment and are about to fuck, and he gets a call that he has to take. So she wanders the apartment again and finds a billiards room. And when he comes in, she tells him, "Now he has to wait." And they play a little game for some pretty low stakes. If she wins, he he takes her to the red room. If he wins, it's his choice. And wasn't the whole drama of the first movie that she didn't like that side of him? Like, what the fuck are we doing here at this point? Yeah. But apparently she's very good at pool, but so is he. But she scratches at the end and she loses. So he's going to be really rough with her. And then they fuck right there in the pool table. And he doesn't take his pants off again. And it's not that rough. No. It's like he just pushes her down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's. I guess that's rough. Yeah, maybe he went in dry. Ooh. Oh, so no one enjoys it. Uh, <laughs> now, question: Are those silver balls still in there? We don't see them get taken no. out, right? They, we do get. Okay. We do see them get taken out. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't recall because I could just like, hey, like you know, you're supposed to take those out. Like you can get a really bad <laughs> infection. <laughs> They're pickled now. <laughs> oh, boo! <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Uh, she starts trying to clean up the mess Jack left behind at work. Now she has an assistant. Later, they go to her apartment for her to retrieve a few things, which is like a $3 toothbrush. I don't know why she made the trick all the way back there for that. But when she's there, the girl that's been following her, Leela, is there with a gun. Leela says that Anna isn't giving Christian what he wants, and he's just pretending. And then Christian comes in and commands Leela to kneel and takes the gun from her kind of fucked up manipulation do you have to do to have that kind of power over someone for two years after you've broken up with them and has Leela been trafficked i think the answer is yes it's debatable christian very least. yeah she she has the look of sex trafficked right <laughs> yeah i think so right because she's really she looks broken yeah and that that's that's the kind of look you get from just seeing some horrific stuff yeah Christian tells Anna to go wait for her for him in the car, but she gets upset and she walks off, and then she just keeps on walking. She walks around Seattle for three hours and comes back after Christian has had people searching for her the entire time. They argue about how he treated Leela and how Anna will never be able to give him that level of obedience. So he says he doesn't need it, and then kneels like a submissive. And then he tells her that he isn't a dominant. He's a sadist that gets off punishing women that look like his mother, which is better? I suppose, <laughs> according to him, <laughs> the the next the next words out of her mouth should have been "Look over there" and then "Run <laughs> away." Yeah, Christian then lets Anna touch him in his no no place, which is his chest, <laughs> and they fuck <laughs> his no no place <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of the night. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. I'm sorry. In the middle of the night, <laughs> caught me off guard. In the middle of the night. <laughs> In the middle of the night, he starts having a bad dream and she wakes him out of it and he tells her he wants to marry her, but she thinks he's still dreaming. In the morning, he she comes into Christian's gym to see him working out on a pommel horse, which is kind of weird. He just has that. I, I, I was like, I was waiting for it. I was like, where's the where's the stunt double to do like the whatever you call them? Gymnastics. The, stuff the routine, it. the horse, the pommel the horse. The gymkata. Yeah. Perfect dismount. Yeah. <laughs> 
Later, Christian's sister calls Anna and asks her what she should get Christian for his birthday. And Anna didn't even know it was his birthday coming up. And then apparently his parents are also throwing him a big party. The right? fact that he never... Yeah, I would say. She meets up with Christian and she asks about his birthday and the party. And he mentions that he's going to Portland for business. So they have a kind of back and forth while he's there. She's saying that she's going out for drinks and him doing business. After the trip, Christian flies his helicopter back home with the co-pilot and somewhere over Mount St. Helens, the engine blows and the helicopter crashes into the forest, much to the delight of John Landis. <laughs> <laughs> Anna goes to the bar with some friends, and as they catch up, her roommate's boyfriend, who is also Christian's brother, which I completely forgot about, gets a call that says Christian's chopper went down and he's currently missing. Family I think this gather- was the moment to the mm-hmm. phone. Yeah, I was just confused that he was he was the one that got the call. I was yeah. like, why is this guy getting the call? The family gathers at Christian's apartment waiting to hear any news and they hear over the news that Christian was found alive and then Christian walks through the front door as if he shouldn't be at the hospital right now. And then they yeah. have, he tells everybody about what happened and then everyone leaves. He tells yeah. him it's still his birthday and she should open the gift that he should open the gift that she got for him. Probably not. He opens it and it's a keychain, but on the back she's written yes, saying that she wants to marry him. And then they fuck. In the shower, and he's still wearing his fucking pants. <laughs> well, to be fair, now he just he to be fair. <laughs> he walked from a helicopter crash all the way home. Maybe he just wasn't thinking about taking his pants off. So he, right, because he's he's cussed, cussed. and he's probably not going to make it through the night unless he seeks medical attention. <laughs> and then he dies. <laughs> I mean, I like I haven't been in a helicopter crash, but I feel like having sex is probably the last thing I would be thinking about that night. It's like I probably just want to get some sleep. <laughs> well, then she like, what would she get upset about it? But Christian, come on, we we have to celebrate. God, fine. <laughs> then she tells him she wants to take her to the red room too. So he's got to go through this whole pomp and circumstance. She she does. Trying, she's trying to fuck it out of him. I think. Right. Yeah. Fuck that concussion. <laughs> That's that's how it works, right? <laughs> I mean, that's a better plan than the NFL had for 50 years. <laughs> <a> good point. <laughs> uh, so he does. He blindfolds her and restrains her. And then they fuck with lots of oil. And finally, he takes his pants off. I've never thought I would care so much about a guy <laughs> keeping his pants on. But here we are. It, it really does. It, it is distracting. I agree. It, it's such a small detail. Just like, but it's every time. And if they only had like two sex scenes, it wouldn't be a big, big deal. But there are like six or seven sex scenes in here where he keeps his pants right above his ass. You know, he doesn't pull them down. It's not like they're down around his ankles, or like down past yeah. his knees. And he's fucking and I'm making a whole big deal about it. He's unzipping and taking his dick out and fucking her. Yeah, yeah, I maybe that's it. That's the whole move. His his shirt's still tucked in, his tie's probably still on. It's gotta be something with him, right? It's gotta be something with the actor and not you no know, it's just weird. I I don't have an explanation for it. Yeah. That it could be, yeah. I and mean, he's got a mole would, there or something. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe Jamie Dornan has a tattoo that they would feel like, oh well, Christian Gray wouldn't have that tattoo. That's a good point. It's very possible. Hmm. Either way, I don't know. It's just, it's just so odd. it's just such an odd choice. Yeah, such an odd choice. It's something that could have really been taken care of. Yeah, but for a movie that has made that seems to have made zero choices, it's a weird one to have <laughs> hung your hat on. Right. You know? That's that's the that's the one you stick by. <laughs> Christian Gay, Gray fucks with his pants on. <laughs> Quite the character development. <laughs> This time he's doing it without his pants. Ooh, spicing it up a bit. It's free. Uh, you know what? Maybe it's cold. <laughs> he's got bl- bad circulation in his legs. <laughs> yeah, it's Seattle. I mean, it gets cold there, obviously. He's frugal. <laughs> That's why he's a billionaire. Like, Who turned up the thermostat to 70? <laughs> it's like uh, wool lining in those pants. <laughs> he, he needs it to be... He does. He needs it to be cold fucking. He needs it to be... Uh, like It's like Alaska fucking. Can't can't have Miami fucking. Can't be hot and sweaty. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So they fuck with lots of oil, and later after the sex, she calls her mom and tells her that not only did she get back together with Christian, they're getting married. Then Christian and Anna go to his parents' party, and Elena is there. Christian makes a speech and takes the opportunity to announce that he and Anna are engaged, much to the light of everybody except Elena. Later. Elena corners Anna, telling her that she's not right for him. So Anna throws water in her face. 
Christian shows up to tell Anna that she doesn't know what he wants. She only taught him how to fuck, not to love. And Christian's mom overhears this and orders Elena out of her house and slaps her for good measure. Then Christian and his mom have a talk while Anna goes to his childhood bedroom and sits among his Chronicles of Riddick poster. And then he comes to tell her that they're getting rid of Elena from all the businesses and brings her to the pool to properly propose to her with a ring. And everyone celebrates with fireworks as Jack looks on from across the lake menacingly. Why is he and that's there? The end. How did he... He's like, he snuck into the, the ball, the ball, the masked ball. Oh, did he? Because he stole the picture. Oh. Yeah. I was going to say, how did he even find out about this? I don't know. This... I don't know why he's... Yeah. The stepmom just I guess we'll find out. everybody. I guess we'll find out in two years when we gotta watch the last one of these. Oh boy. Thank God there's only one more, man. And they they didn't split it into two goddamn versions. Yeah. And that yeah, this this is bad. Oof. I don't get the appeal. It's just boring. Or not. Uh, no. uh yeah. well Layla is spelled L E I L A. You know what this is? This is this plays the way I don't know if you Mark, you might have seen this ant. I don't know if you have or if any of our listeners have, but there's an Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode where Dennis tries to get his uh, erotic novels uh, into a film. He tries to make a film out of his erotic novels. And essentially, his erotic novel is the guy he like, coming in and telling the woman to shut up because words, uh, women's mouths are not for talking, they're for entering. And that's essentially <laughs> like what this movie, like this series is. Like she she tries to say something like she's worried and then he just tells her, no, everything's fine. And they fuck. That's, yeah. that's, that's the plot of this movie. I'm worried about something. No, everything's fine. Bang. Just re- right. reset. Oh, there's someone else here that, you know, might cause us a problem. Don't worry, I'll handle it. Bang! It, it's such a boring plot. Yeah, I'm. I guess if I had to sit down there and analyze it, it's like I guess Anastasia really doesn't have whole personality, so she's kind of like you know people can project themselves onto her in terms of book form anyway. So that someone could put themselves in the shoes of her, and then like guess Christian, you know the being able to wine her and dine her, and again sixty nine her. Uh, all over the world, but they never really leave Seattle. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's appealing for the fantasy aspect of it. And I wish if like he was more charming and likable, I could see the fantasy aspect. Or is it just the whole fact is like, oh, I could change him like that old stereotype thing. It's like he just needs the right woman to come along to change him and break him from his trauma. Yeah. Is that appealing to someone other than like as opposed to? A guy that's super suave and wants to fuck you in uh, in on the Greece the Greek islands, you know. Right. I I hate <laughs> I hate how the rest of his family is super nice and he's just so boring. Because Mark's right. I'd rather watch the uh, the other couple, you know, going about just gallivanting around the world. I want to see what the, this guy's a billionaire. I want to see him flex that money, you know, not just yeah. Like, oh, I have a helicopter. And I, I can, here's $24,000. Like, yeah, okay, any billionaire could do that. I just want to see you do crazy outlandish shit. You're a sex f- uh, a sex fiend. Do some crazy shit, man. Yeah, yeah, get into like... Don't, banging on the pool table, that's not crazy. Right, like take her to some weird sex party in Amsterdam that she's yeah. like, yeah. that's like way too much like for someone that's not into it. It's like, all right, I did not to see need to see that guy that's dressed like a baby with a leash around his neck, <laughs> getting ridden by two six foot two German dominatrix women. <laughs> that's very specific. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, you know, just off the top of my head, um, that would be crazier. Yeah, just learn something about it. Yep. Yeah, you know what? We all got our thing, and that's mine specific. <laughs> you know what? I was gonna say we're not gonna shame anyone. No, here. not at all. That's not what we're about. <laughs> I, I think you're right, though. It's it's for a, a series about uh, BDSM and trauma. It, it's nothing out of the ordinary. No. And, you know, I, I'm sure the BDSM community has something to say about that. But, um, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I, I was thinking to myself, what if they're just like, yeah, no, this is how it is. Like, everyone kind of thinks that we're, you know, weirdos. But, yeah, we just kind of like, we all have a sex dungeon. That's normal. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, pool table that we fucked on. Yeah, that's you, there's like stages, right? 
first the pool table yeah. then you graduate to the sex dungeon it, i don't know because i'm not i'm not into that but if, if you are reach out to us and let us know yeah this is normal or no this has nothing to do with what we're about yeah i think that's yeah if you're listening to this and you're either a person that's into bdsm uh or a woman that finds this the books sexy or these movies sexy i would just really like to know what's up like why what is it about these books cuz like there's you know there's so many erotic books you know the, the romance novels and those i get like oh man the 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 farmhands is taking me in the barn that's <laughs> you know with his yeah. rippling at rippling abs i get that i see the appeal of that this is just Guy that's got a lot of money and nothing really else going for him. Yeah. And he, he's the world's most boring billionaire. And he's obviously just not a good person. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's possessive. Yeah. It's like everything he says that's out of his mouth is like, oh, yeah, you're not nice. You're not a good person. Mm -hmm. Why would I want to fuck you? And, and, I don't know. And again, I don't know what it is. It just it leads me to believe that she uh, she wants the money. Right. And also, if you fuck with your pants on, also, what's that about? Yeah, let us know if you do that. <laughs> we we got to talk. Yeah. Is that our new Twitter poll? Fucking pants on or off? I, yeah. So we, we'll put the movies, like, rate, you know, vote for the movie you want us to cover for the, the last month of the podcast, of, the, uh, of the, the last podcast of the month. Then put the fucking pants or no pants. <laughs> I'm, I am team no pants. That's just me. Yeah, all all the time. I yeah. I couldn't do it's too uncomfortable. Yeah, well, you need to be comfortable, yeah. right? That's the whole point yeah. of fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. And it, and again, you don't want to ruin your pants. I like my pants. <laughs> I don't own. Yeah. I don't own like a ton of pants. So <laughs> yeah, uh, that's it. That's it for Fifty Shades Darker. What a piece of shit. I don't get it. Yeah, if, if you like uh, this movie, that I feel bad for you. Yeah. But uh, that's it. That's our episode. Check out all our socials. you hear them after this. Next week, we've got another episode coming up. I'm sure it's going to be a great one. Um, so that's going to wrap it up. So the director of Fifty Shades Darker is James Foley. So for Dan Aquino and Mark Myers, this is Anthony Lavecchio telling James Foley, well, you certainly made a movie, didn't you? Thanks for listening to They Called Us a Movie. Subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts and be sure to check us out on Twitter and Instagram at TicTampod. That's T-C-T-A-M-Pod. You can also check us out on TikTok at They Called Us a Movie.